EIGRP works just like every routing protocol that we're going to be talking about in the context of the CCIE routing and switching version 5 exam. It's going to allow us to have baseline operations on Ethernet segments, serial interfaces, and also it's going to be deployed or is able to be deployed via our DMVPN configurations. However, there's one element that we need to take care of, and it's that element that I mentioned previously about split horizon. So let's take a look at the command line and figure out what's involved in remedying the issue with regard to DMVPNs and the fact that we are going to use that split horizon concept. So in order to be able to do this, let's go ahead and enable the connection between R5 to the three remote offices. So what I'll do, first of all, is I'm going to go to 19, R19, and I'm going to say router EIGRP 10, and I'm going to say network 10, 10, 10, 19, and I want to match it exactly. And I'm going to also advertise my loopback, 172.16.19.19, match it exactly. We'll go to 20 and do the same thing. Router, EIGRP, 10, network, 10, 10, 10, 20, match it exactly. And network, 10, oh, excuse me, 172.16.20.20, 20, 20, we'll match. And then lastly, 21, and then we'll configure the hub. So here, router, EIGRP, 10, network, 172.16.21.21.0000, and network, 10, 10, 10, 21.0000. So all that's going to do is turn on the routing process for EIGRP on show IP protocols, on my loopback, and on my tunnel interface that I'm using to reach my connection. Now, I'm running two versions or two EIGRP processes. I'm running EIGRP 10 for my routing process, but across my DMVPN, I'm running EIGRP 400. Because what you can't see here is, is that in our topology, we have another router in here called ISP4 that's actually giving us interconnectivity. So at some point in our configuration, we are going to get involved with that router, but right now it's, it's simple enough for us to just say we're going to ignore it. Now what we want to do is go over to R5 and bring up this interface. So config T, router EIGRP 10. I'm going to say network 10, 10, 10, 5. I'm going to match it exactly. And hopefully we should get three peerings. I'll take myself out of the equation. Notice we got one across for to 20, one to 19, one to 21, all out tunnel zero, and they're all listed as new adjacencies. Just to verify that, do show IP EIGRP neighbors. And now we can see everything that we've learned via our tunnel. Notice that we have a Q count of zero. Now, if, that, if I've done my, everything properly on R22, show IP route EIGRP, I should be able to see 172.16.19.19. 19, 19. Uh, show IP route, oh, no EIGRP. 172.16.19.0. Should be able to see 20.0 and 21.0. Should be able to reach them. Ping 172.16.19.19. 20.20 and 21.21. Now, at first blush, this would lead me to believe that everything is doing great in my environment. Could I even ping these from my own loopback? So source them from my LO0 interface. I've got reachability. So what happens when I go over to R19? Exit. Show IP route. And we've got a lot of information here that we can see. Let's go through the loopbacks and see if we can verify them. R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. I have 19, which is my loopback, and I can see that they're directly connected, local and connected, right here. And then I have my Ethernet segments that I'm learning are the advertised ones that are coming from CAT1, CAT2, and from R22, but I don't have any knowledge about 20 and 21. So let's verify that one more time. I'll say ping, 172, 16, 21, 21, and I have zero reachability. Now the rationale behind why I have zero reachability boils down to, again, the split horizon behavior. So if I want to remedy this, if I want to fix this problem, I need to go to R5. And on R5, I'm going to go interface tunnel zero. 
and I'm going to say no IP split horizon EIGRP 10 and I'm going to hit enter. Now the moment I do that, that's going to bring my links down. I'll take myself out here. It's going to bring my links down. Why? They resynchronize they resynchronize because my split horizon behavior changed. So now if I go over to R19 and repeat that ping, I now will have the ability to be able to reach it and I can even source it from my own loopback address, source LO0. So there's not much to it. Didn't really want to pound it to death, but the idea here is, is remember, EIGRP uses split horizon even in iOS 15 code. So let's not lose track of that. Keep that in mind. That's been one of the corner case troubleshooting tickets that I've used time and time again to snag students because it's not the corner case stuff they forget. It's the basic default behaviors that we lose sight of because we're so focused on these complex questions that we expect, expect Cisco to ask us in the context of the routing and switching version 5 exam. Now, with that being said, what we're going to do now is we're going to continue our discussions by looking at how we can actually ensure that our neighbor is who they say they are with regard to allowing them to participate in EIGRP. In other words, we're going to take a look at authentication. I'll see you in that video. Bye-bye.